letter number one. within me but when I gave my life to Christ my life changed and I really thank God because of what the Lord did in my life and what he has continued to do uh, today I want us to share briefly on the race of life the race of life race I'm talking about running of life race of life but I want to focus specifically on the spiritual race spiritual race Hallelujah. I want to thank God because of his faithfulness. How many of us have been athletes? You have had an opportunity to run. Maybe in your primary school, in secondary school or whatever, that you have had an opportunity to be on the track just to run. It could be 100 meters, 200, or whichever it is. How many of us had that opportunity? Wow, that's good. Yes, because of time, I will not give an opportunity to people to respond. But I have to mention what kind of race and their position. So allow me to uh, just, I have a little experience of running. I come from this region, so you know, people from this region, they are athletes. That's why it's normally called the the city of Champion. Eldoret is normally Wasingishu or Eldoret is called the city of Champion. Champions. And then Nandi is called the source of Champions. I worry about Telke Marakwet. The home of Champions. It's like a very clear categorization. Eh? So I want to say I also had an opportunity to run in primary Gdogo. Uh, high school, I used to run 10,000, 5,000. Um, so you realize I could be a Maradona. I feel I went up to district level. But uh, when I went to university, unfortunately, I was here. <laughs> I was here when it was Mo University, Chip Koirel campus. So actually, I reported here on 30th of March, uh, 1992. That's the time when I came to first year. And uh, I want to say for your information, uh, Professor Donald Otieno, who is here, he actually taught me botany. So, uh, so I want to thank God because I'm with my teacher. <laughs> that is why those who are doing tourism, you, do, you are doing Bachelor of Tourism Management. Me, I, I did Bachelor of Science in Tourism. So for me, I did all the sciences. Botany, zoology, chemistry, physics, all of them. Anyway, that's a, that is for a different day. But I want to say, I thank God because I was one of the reasons why God allowed tourism to be taught in a university in Kenya. I, I thank God because I was one of the reasons. I have given this testimony sometime, but I just want to give a small snapshot. 
For me, I, 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 I was, I'm not a genius. I was not the best, but I was also not the worst. <laughs> I was an average, but slightly above average. So um, I remember I used to be number one many times. And uh, in KCSE then, I think there were 52 students who were ahead of me. And uh, so I was among, during my time, there was nobody with an A stand in Kenya. We had 52 A's, A minus, and we had 300 P plus. So I was among the group of P plus. And I had the choice of going for engineering, uh, architect, and uh, medicine and others. But for me, I didn't want to go to university. I wanted to finish my high school and go to be a full-time preacher because that was the calling and it was consuming me. <laughs> so I want to say God had to speak to me very clearly and very heavy. And I remember he told me you'll go to university. I asked God for what? And God gave me four reasons. I have forgotten one. I need to ask God to remind me. <laughs> but I remember three. And one of them, God told me that I have some work for you in the university. I have some work for you in the university. Number two, he told me, you are going to be an encouragement to the Christian Union. Because I was a CEO chairman of Kabarak University. I mean, Kabarak High School, you know. We were looking forward for a university. We kept on waiting, university never came. But thank God it came later. So, uh, so the president then used to be telling us, this will be a university. We kept on waiting. It never happened. So, uh, but God had given me grace. I was a Christian Union chairman, and I was also used to be among the best in, in class. I remember I was given among the awards by the uh, president. And I want to say, I also had an opportunity to preach when the president was seated down, and I could share the gospel of the kingdom. That is uh, by that time. The message is, God told me, that will be an encouragement to the Christian Union because the, Christ, the three Christian Union chairmen ahead of me have not performed so well. So God told me you're going to be an encouragement. And then number three, he told me you will be a blessing to your family. Uh, the rest is history. But I want to say I thank God because I came here and when I came, uh, before I came, choosing of the courses, now I ask God, you are the one who told me to go to university. What am I going to study? Because I'm not interested in any. So God told me tourism. He, he, God spoke in English, the so word tourism. <laughs> so I want to say, now when it came to choosing of the courses, there was no tourism in any of the courses. And during that time, you could choose a course before you do exam. And when the results come out, there is nothing like you check uh, maybe, is it, you call it what, cluster, plus, uh, yeah, that, that you, can, is it you can choose, you only use to choose before you do exam. When the results come, if you don't meet your, your I mean, the course you, you have chosen, you are, if you are good in science, you are given BSc science, BSc or BA. So there was nothing like in between. Uh, so I want to say, um, so now, I ask him, I used my knowledge. So, uh, so among the courses which was closer to tourism, my knowledge then was wildlife. Then the other one, I ask myself, which one will I get time to preach the gospel? So I chose education science, the second choice, education arts, third choice, and then number four, there was no reason. I put information science. It was just to fill the gap, because it wasn't four. Anyway, the message is, of course, I performed well. I qualified, or qualified for wildlife. And uh, yeah, I came. So when I came, mine was a drama. So I was trusting God, and I just became an usher and served God. In brief, I just wanted to say, when I was continuing, there was a decision by National Assembly of Kenya that tourism is a major economic activity that needs to be done and more universities supposed to establish. So more university was directed by parliament to come up with curriculum for, uh, for tourism. So the head of the Department of Wildlife then was called Professor Rambant. I remember, I want to believe the two, Professor Raburu, our DVC, and also Professor Donald Otieni, remember him? Alekwa, head of wildlife 
from South Africa. He was told to come with a curriculum. I'm told, he went around, he said it was not possible to do a degree in tourism. So they had to pick a medical geographer, late Professor Isaac Sindica from Mo University to come and come up with a curriculum of tourism. So I remember I used to be working with a curriculum on top of LT1. Early in the morning, we used to be going there for prayers in the morning. So I want to say <laughs> the curriculum became ready when I was in second year. So actually my first, my transcript of first year is written Pajal of Science in Wildlife. So now I just transferred second year to tourism. So that is how tourism began in this country as a degree. So I want to thank God because I was one of that reason. Anyway, let me know that to cut the long story short. I mean, I thought the only reason why I was here was to come and serve God, to study. And because God had told me he had some work for me, I decided to serve God seriously. Uh, so I became an usher. First year, before the end of the year, I was in charge of ushering. And I went for missions. I want to salute the missioners. So I went for missions. And I'm, one of the most interesting missions I will never forget in my life was in uh, Siaya, uh, where we preached. And over 500 people got saved. And there was somebody, there was a witch who was really disturbing the area. The time when we preached the gospel, the man turned to be like a snake. And we had to do a serious deliverance and he has to be delivered. And it, it, it has really, it created a picking back. And we preached all over this nation and in many places. The message I want to put across is, I was given the, the, the mission, worship and outreach chairman uh, from second year, and I served up to fourth year. I remember I preached on 23rd of July, 1996, when I cleared my uh, exam on 21st of July, 1996. So on Sunday, in, L, in L2, L, L1, that side, uh, that was the biggest hole then by the, just go and look at L1, that was the biggest hole. So I preached, and the message I was preaching was, I have finished the race. So according to me, I, I preached Second uh, Timothy 4.7. I was saying, I'm now out to go and preach the gospel. By the way, I became a full-time preacher for uh, nine months. By adventure, God led me to Uganda in 1997. I became a tourist officer in Nairobi and many others. They, I will not go into details. But eventually I found myself teaching here. And I've now taught for the last 25 years by the grace of God. And I remember uh, 2010, when it became a university college, it was, my school was taken to more university. And I just had a radical faith. I told the vice chancellor then, and the uh, university council more university, me, I'm not going to go to Moi because tourism began here. I'm going to remain here and begin a school. Actually, they thought I had lost the network. So I told them I'm going to begin a school, and that is why you can see School of Business. Uh, God used me to establish that school. I was the founder of that school. No student, no staff. So I want to say, uh, I want to thank God. So when you talk about the spiritual, when you talk about the, uh, the race of life, it is actually about a journey. I've just mentioned about my testimony, it could be part of it. But today, I want us to focus on what the Bible says in the book of Second uh, Timothy. Chapter 2, verse 5. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. Hallelujah. Where are the Maradonas in the house? Nana Mike can be at 5,000, let's say from 1,500, 1,500, 1,500 uh, meters race. It's normally how many laps? It's normally three and a half. And then there is uh, 3,000. There is 5,000. I will not go into the details. But the issue is some of these long races. Hallelujah. It is an analogy about life. It's an analogy about a Christian race. By the way, there is something that I have come up with. Who is this? I know those behind cannot see, but can you tell them? 
This is Eliud Kip. This is uh, Eliud Kipchoge together with uh, Dr. Kangogo. Just pass it uh, those in front. <laughs> so um, Eliud Kipchoge. Uh, those who are interested, those who love athletics, you can actually, uh, you can be able to, you know, you can easily, recently, when he won, uh, by the way, I never expected him to have won recently. Which, 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 where was it? Recently. By the way, I never expected him. But somehow, I actually found, me, me I was so excited. Of course, he won in Japan. I was so excited. Of course, he won in Japan. Before the world. Uh, but the one which, which year was that? 20? Every send them, you send them you masana. Aya. Look at, look at, look at the uh, PIN of that uh, portrait. The, the date I took a photo with him. It was which date? It was? It was 4th December 2019. And uh, he had actually won on 3rd, it was 3rd of October 2019, in years. And uh, actually, like Kibia University, awarded him honorary doctorate on 6th of December. So I was with him on 4th of December, then on 6th he was awarded honorary doctorate at like Kibia University. Now, there is something unique. I remember at that time he was 42 years, of course. When you look at this spot, it looks so, you know, actually, he looks older than me. But of course, I'm older than him. Uh, so, Ukiona Muleaka Makauka, and of course, he's tall. But this is somebody who is a serious Maradona. And this is somebody who has undergone a lot of training. Hello? Marathon is 42 kilometers race. And it actually requires a lot of things. But uh, let me be specific uh, so that I can narrow uh, to this a uh, particular message. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse uh, 1 to 7. You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, and trust to reliable men who will also be qualified to teach others. Verse 3. Endure hardship with us like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. So, here is talking about uh, a fight, but the specific item here is hardship. Now, uh, number four, that's uh, first four. No one serving as a soldier gets involved in civilian affairs. He wants to please his commanding officer, that is discipline. Similarly, if anyone competes as an athlete, he has not received the visitor's crown. Here he is bringing the issue of crown, unless he competes according to the rules. So Paul is admonishing and actually giving charge and direction to his spiritual son, Timothy. There are several things that Paul instructed uh, Timothy. But among them is he actually told him that like is he actually told him that like a good soldier down there he says, like an athlete the message is in life, for somebody to succeed, somebody has to work hard, somebody has to follow rules, somebody has to endure. Hello? Yes, I did say I was Nelly West of Kimbia. So when I was here in university, in Mo University, then I was number three. I was running 10,000. I became number three in regional. That is uh, 10,000 in the, in the region. Then I went to Maseno University. Uh, it was, this was a national athlete, athletics. And uh, I think that was the first time 
Whereby when you are told, get said, go. You know, a bullet is actually being uh, released. You know, at least in a, in a, so of course we had to run. I became number seven. And the first three were taken to Buffalo, US. So my athletics at Masano University. But at least I ran. But let me tell you, prior to going to the truck, there is a lot of discipline. Athletics, athlete, athletics requires strict discipline, working on very highly, the kind of diet, the kind of behavior. Now you have to follow the rules. Hello? You have to endure. It's not easy. Sometimes you feel like breathing and your chest is burning like fire. Sometimes you may even spit blood. But I'm telling you, it requires somebody who is serious, consistent. Hello? In life, there are several races. There is academic race, like uh, first years who have just begun recently on 11th of September. In life, there are also several other races, like, uh, spirit, I mean, I will focus on the spiritual, but there is also economic race, where also people are on the race trying to acquire wealth, trying to acquire riches, and all sorts of properties. In life, there is also a social race, where people want to socialize, they want to interact, they want to get as many followers as possible. Of course, the most important thing is to have a family, to have a team, to have, uh, you know, that you can work closely. In life also, there is also a political race. And that's a very serious one. Eh? Hello? From MCA to the president. Political races are very serious. And normally students are normally used as campaigners. Eh? Those who have been here, I'm sure, I think 2020, last year, I'm sure some of the second, third years, they were, they were polling clerks. Wangabi walikuwa clerks in the polling station, yes. By the way, I was also a polling clerk. I remember 1992. <laughs> and I did so well. 1997, I was given to be deputy presiding. After I became, I went for interview presiding officer. Siku faulu. Nekaenda a debut, nekapewa. And I was trained. At the end of, of it, people to be, when the and ballot boxes were being given, my name was removed. I, from then I said, never again. So I stopped. <laughs> anyway, the message is that, that year in the class too. Like in the, no, there are those who campaign. What MCS, that time councillors, what MCS, what MPs, what governors, you know, president, the kind of resources, the kind of planning, the kind of seriousness, the kind of race. See what I Some is fair, others are unfair. But actually it's a serious race. That is a political race. I thank God me, I'm not part of it. A bill from my constituency came to me 207. They wanted me to be MP. I told them no. 2012, two constituencies came. I told them that is not my mandate. Mine is spiritual. Now there is also working race where people work. Like now you are looking forward to be at I like. So how many of us are teachers or they are training to be teachers? I know that's a maturity. Of course you are dean Dr. Jose Akepla Katisia, I know he's a very proud dean because he has a big constituents. But let me, <laughs> can we clap for teachers in the house? <laughs> let me say this. I will say something contrary. I, I want to say, many of us, we are teachers because we wanted to be doctors, we never qualified. <laughs> Some of us, we became teachers because we wanted to be engineers, we never qualified. Some of us wanted to be, you know, other profession. But I want to tell you today that as a child of God, it is very important for you to tell God, here I am, that you may order my steps. Otherwise, you may live, you may live a frustrated teacher because that was not your passion and that was not your calling. For information, I thank God I belong to a certain group that we are actually not only studying but practically discovering our purposes. Why are we here on earth? Accomplishing God's purpose. Let me tell you, that's normally the central part of somebody's life. You should not be like one of the deputy principal in one of the schools where I'm the POM chairman. 
Yakali, I found him, I, I became a POM chairman of Tasku last year, in August. And I found that he was really not relating and he was out of purpose. At the end of the day, I had to, actually I had to make a remand for him to be removed. It was not intentional. I tried, I found he was beyond repair. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I want to say, there are some people, they can be teachers, but at the end of the day, really, they have no calling, there is no passion. Hello? By the way, I normally get also involved in employing teachers, uh, TAC teachers, uh, several times. Anyway, I want to tell you, when it comes to working race, that is, I'm talking about people, they are in employment, and you begin a race. It's a channel where you can begin until retirement. But the most important thing I want to tell you is for you to be in your purpose. When I say something. How many of us know they are purpose? How many of us have a vision? Very few. Or many. There are not many who have got. Your work, what you do, may not exactly be why God allowed you to be here on earth. As I was saying, some of you could be because of your grades. But you can still trust God. When you are a child of God, you can tell God, yeah, I am, order my steps. When I say that. that one will be better. Now, for us to begin a spiritual race, it begins from the time when we give our lives to Jesus. When I say that. The time, just like now, when you are, marked, when you are there at, at the field, and there is that 100 meters, when people are, being, are told, on your mark, said, go. Normally when it's on your mark, your, your knee should be down. Said you should be at the middle. Then go, now you spring. I want to say, that is now the time when you surrender your life to Jesus. When I say that. that is now the spiritual race when it begins. But as you begin that spiritual race, Brethren, I want to encourage us that it is not easy. There is a lot of foundational things. And that is one of the things I thank God in a university setup. When you hear about prayers, when you hear about Bible study, I thank God recently I've seen people congregating around the bush, concluding prayers. Some in the uh, EDs, ED classes and others. Eh? I really get encouraged. I think I need to check those airports and airstrips, whether they are properly, you know, utilized. Let me tell you, those are very important foundational, you know, things. Those are very important training that it will actually enable you to determine how far you will go. It will determine how fast you run. When I say son. This is a time of studying the Bible like no other time. If you are able to study some serious academic Work. Recently, where was I? I saw Aboth. There was a, 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 was a physics book, Aboth. I choose it. It was the course of this week. I don't know where. But when I saw it, I was just reminded. I don't know which is the biggest book now. But when you get some of those voluminous books, and people read, and they understand, and they get, get the concepts and formulas and apply, I want to encourage you. You have got energy. I want you to apply the same energy and even more in reading your Bible. I want to encourage you, brethren. Well, let, I, I don't encourage people just to be working with online Bible all the time. Eh? It's okay to have online, but also have a physical one. When you have a physical one, it helps you in reference and in checking and even marking and a few things. Eh? So I want to tell you, can you be a friend to the word of God? I want to give my testimony. I had also heard of the myth that you could somehow believe okay, Manisa Utakufa. Like it was not very, it was a dog. So me, I decided, well, I was told, read four chapters per day. And by the end of the year, you have cleared the Bible. So me, I actually decided to do it. And I remember I read four chapters, Nikamaliza. I decided to read eight chapters, Nikamaliza, in six months. I remember when I was in third year, I wrote, I studied 16 chapters, and I cleared in three months. 
So if there is a time I read the Bible was when I was in university. When I, said I cleared in three months. Of course, I've read even later several times. But actually, there's no time I have read like the time I was in university. So I want to encourage you. If you know the Lord and you are saying, can you purpose before you finish university? At least you have read the Bible through once. Hello? And it's not just reading like a novel. But as you read, this word is alive. It is powerful. Hallelujah. Those are very important training and these are very important discipline that it will enable you as you move on. Praise God. I have no time to give testimonies of the people who used to pray in the bush. Somewhere we used to solve some problems. Let me tell you. A Christian is an extraordinary person. Hello? A Christian is a normal person. And I want you to look at, look at me with both eyes. A Christian is a normal person. He's an extraordinary person. If you are ordinary, you'll just become ordinary. If you live ordinary life, you'll just live, you'll just, you'll just be ordinary. If you treat life casually, then you will actually live casually. But I'm telling you, if you know the Lord and you are serious with him, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. God is going to use you to do exploits because of the foundation that you have actually, you know, the channel. And for you to succeed, you need to have a clear vision. Don't be like me when I was young. Because I was young, I was young. I was I I didn't have a very long term vision. I want to encourage you. Can you trust God? This is a time for you to get even a clear vision. I thank God it was only last year when I actually got my 100 years vision. 100 years vision, which I'm actually working on it. That time I will not be there. But I want to tell you, when you have got a long term vision, it will enable you to go far. Praise God. When you get a very tall building, the kind of foundation that is put on the ground. There is the pinnacle tower in Nairobi. I saw on the foundation, well, it is somewhere in Apain. The kind of foundation it was put, it was so deep, it has tall a bit. But actually, the more the foundation, the taller the building will be. Praise God. If you have got a bigger vision, praise the name of the Lord. I like what Paul said. And uh, that is in Acts. That is talking about the vision of, of Paul and also about his race. And about his race. Uh, the Bible says uh, that is Paul that um, however I consider my life worth nothing to me if only I may finish the race and complete the task that the Lord Jesus has given me. The task of testifying to the gospel of God's grace. So when Paul summarized, Paul is one of the servants of God I really admire. After Jesus, of course, Jesus is the Savior. Then Paul is one of the servants of God I admire and is my role model. He said that my life is worth nothing. If you want to summarize his life, that it had no any other meaning, but that he may finish the race. That it was a race that was set before him. That's what the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1. That let us run the race with perseverance. The race that has been set before us. All of us who have been given a race to run Wapendwa. Hallelujah. The question is, do we know the kind of race? Do we have the discipline? Do we know the rules? Praise the name of the Lord. I want to tell you by the grace of God that Paul was so clear and consumed. And he said, I want to finish the race by testifying to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, it is very clear if somebody has a clear vision, you know what is your mandate. You know what kind of, you know, grace that God has given you. What kind of calling, what kind of direction that God has given you. It will enable you to prepare well. If you are preparing for 100 meters, it's not like the same way you will prepare for a marathon of 42 kilometers. No, it's not the same. 
There are different rules. There are different engagement. There are different kind of, uh, you know, the, the kind of uh, even team. In terms of, when it comes to that case of unions, yet pay setters. Alikuwa na wa people who could run five kilometers when Gina wana ingia another five kilometers so that to ensure that they keep the pace. The kind of company you will have is different because they are going to enable you achieve the target. One as well. I just want to mention a few things concerning a spiritual race. First Corinthians 9:24, just write, I will not read. That when it's telling us, Paul is also encouraging Corinthians that when you are running. Run like somebody who wants to win the race. And he's saying there are people, when people are running, it's only one person who is given a prize. But of course, we know sometimes it's number one, number two, number three, you want to pay a prize. But Paul has mentioned it's only the first person who wins. So you actually run with the intention of winning. Hallelujah. Not just running aimlessly, but with a clear focus and a clear target. The second one is Colossians 2, verse 2. That he was, Paul was saying, I don't want to run this race in vain. That is, he didn't want to preach the gospel because he had been called to the Gentiles. He wanted to be sure he had to go and present himself to the elders, the apostles in Jerusalem, so that he could examine the kind of doctrine he was sharing, that he was actually teaching correctly, so that he should not be able, he was saying, I don't want to run in my, I don't want to run my race in vain. That is, okay, when you are running in vain, unakimbia unanguka, unaenda unachanganyikiwa, unaenda, you cross the line, you don't follow the rules, you are disqualified. And that's why he said, I don't want when I preach too many, I be rejected. So he wanted to be sure he is running a race that is winning and following the rules. Praise God. The same time, the same Paul also told Colossians, he was of course, he, he rebuking them, that you are running a good race and you are actually obeying the truth. Like you know, what has happened? You have changed. So sometimes people can run. Like you know, we need to run and be consistent and fix our eyes on Jesus who is the father and perfecter of our faith. Praise God. Because he's the one he has run this race. He's the one holding us. And I want to encourage us by what he actually mentioned in uh, 2 Timothy 4, 7. That I have finished the race. At the end of the day, it was so clear. Nakasema, the crown of righteousness is awaiting me, and not only me, but all those who are looking forward for his coming. That is all those people. So that this race is not only for number one. Hallelujah. I want you to tell your friend, this race is not only for number one. It is for those who are finished. It is for those who have followed the rules. Wapendwa is going to be great if all of us are going to be found in the kingdom of God. You can be running your 100, you can be running your 1500, but at the end of the day, can you ensure that you finish? And that's why Paul was saying, I want to finish. There is always there some races, everybody who has finished is given something. And that is actually, of course, whoever is number one will be given more. So I want to tell you now, it depends on your grace and the kind of mandate that God has given you. I want, to, I want to encourage all of us who are There are several things. Number one, just as I summarize, there is the foundation which requires a lot of discipline, strict discipline. Number two, there is the issue of beginning. That you have to be very clear that you need to have made a decision. I want to run, to run this race. I like people who have decided to walk and serve Jesus. Who have decided not to compromise. Praise God. I like Daniel. In the Bible, he was a covenant. But the Bible says there was no corruption. There was no slothfulness. Whatever he was doing, he did thoroughly with integrity. And there was nothing. In other words, he distinguished himself that he was an excellent administrator. Praise God. So I want to tell you that we have actually to ensure that we run this race, we maintain the Christ and, and our faith, and at the same time we do it properly. Again, there is an issue of teamwork. What Pendwa? That's what the Bible says, we should not stop meeting together in Hebrews 10, 25. But we need to spur one another and encourage one another. Just like that athlete, Eliud Kipchoge, who had some peer setters, who had to help him, so that at the end of the day, he attains less than two hours. He requires a team. He requires people to encourage you, to tell you, you'll make it, brother. You'll make it, sister. One as well, Hallelujah. Finally, Praise the name of the living God.
This is the one I am looking for. Hallelujah. After all this, I want to receive, the Bible says very clearly, there is great rejoicing when a sinner, this one I'll read because it's the last one. There is great rejoicing when a sinner receives Christ. Mtu ambaye mwenye dhambi ya kuyokoka, mbingu wanasimama, malaika wanashangilia, kwa sababu wanajua, this one is a victor, this one is a great person, this one is a servant of God. The Bible says, the one I am looking forward, First Peter chapter 1 verse 11, Let me start from there. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you, such intently and with greatest care, trying to find out the time and circumstances, uh, greatest care, trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing, when he predicted the suffering of Christ and the glories that would follow. Sort of, uh, yeah, uh, this is actually Second Peter. Sorry, uh, Second Peter one eleven. L let me tell you, brethren, we are living in we wonderful time where a great revelation of God is releasing. Uh, let me tell you just a snapshot. You know, when there is a lot of knowledge, innovation, creativity in the physical, in the spiritual, there is so much that God is releasing. Next time I'll tell you. And you receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I want that standing, you know, in standing ovation, receiving a rich welcome into the kingdom of God. That welcome, my son. Welcome because you have finished the race. You have kept it the faith. That is what the Lord is expecting out of us. I want us to stand. Hallelujah. I want us to close our eyes. I want, you, I want you to ask yourself, have I begun this particular race? I want you to ask yourself, and uh, since you begin this race by getting saved, by being ready, by being recruited, that just like even a normal race, somebody who should have trained and has been seen and qualified and selected to be among the team, to be among the competing team. So the question is that for you to begin this particular race, you should have actually given your life to Jesus. And as you give your life to Jesus, let me tell you today, it is also high time to ensure that you need to continue running the race. There is running the good race, but there are some people who are running their race in vain. There are those who are not running a good race. I want you to ask yourself, are you running a good race? Are you running a good race? Number three, are you following the rules? Are you following the rules? And then I want to ask, I want you to ask yourself, are you looking forward to finishing the race? Are you looking forward to finishing the race? Are you looking forward to winning the prize? Those are things that the Lord Jesus is expecting out of us. And we cannot make it alone. And I like what Jesus said in John 14, 23, that if you love me, you will obey me. And I and my father, we shall come and make a home in you. In other words, for you to succeed, Christ Jesus, the Father, the Holy Spirit, they make a boat, they make a home inside you. They are the one who will enable you to walk. They will enable you to run. They will give you the stamina. They will give you the energy to run and move on. And you shall not fail. So if you are here and you have not given your life to Jesus, this is your time for you to release your life to him. That he may come to your life. He may come and make a home. He may come and walk inside you. He may come and strengthen you. He may come and give you the direction. He may come and enable you to begin right. Raise up your hand. If you have not given your life to Christ Jesus. He's saying we shall come. Jesus said I will come. My father will come. The Holy Spirit will come. And we shall make a home. We shall make an abode inside you. And it will determine how you are going to live. It will determine the kind of race. It will determine how you are going to run. How you are going to finish. Raise up your hand. If you, have no, if you are ready to give your life to Jesus. 
you are not getting saved, but you want to get saved today. You want to surrender your life to Jesus. Raise up your hand. You are here. You know you are saved. You have been running. But many times things have not been easy. Sometimes you have fallen. Sometimes you have had challenges. Sometimes you may choke up. Sometimes you find yourself doing things outside the rules. But you want to tell Jesus that he may hold your hand. He may restore you. That Jesus may walk with you. He may enable you to be strong and to continue until you finish. Raise up your hand that you want Christ Jesus to help you. You have been running, but you have not been running well. You have been living a Christian life. Like in your life is not okay. There are some issues. There is time. There is laziness. There are challenges which sometimes they have overcome you. But it's a time. Jesus is saying, I am here. He's here to hold your hand and he's here to walk with you. Raise up your hand. Hallelujah. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I want to worship you, King of Kings, because of today. Thank you, Lord, because you say you will not leave us as orphans, but that you will come to us. That you're going to walk and you're going to run the race with us. I want to pray for these dear ones who have raised up their hands. That they have been running, but they have not been running well. They have had challenges. They have had issues in life. But at the Lord Jesus, that He may hold their hands. You may hold their lives. You may give them the energy. You may give them the grace. You may give them the ability that they may walk and they may run. They may run with perseverance. They may run with endurance. That they may continue to focus their eyes on you. They shall not be distracted by the issues in life, by challenges. But unto our God, they shall desire to finish the journey. We worship you and we bless you, Jehovah God, because you are doing it. I want to pray for this Christian union, that Jehovah God, that even as they are at the transition level, I want to pray that Jehovah God, the team who have served you, they have done their part. Even as they are handing over to a new one, I pray that the same grace, the same power, the same anointing shall be there. And that you will continue to take them from one glory to another. Thank you because of this Christian union. I want to pray for the leadership. I want to pray to Jehovah God for Bible studies. I pray for ministries. I pray for different, uh, for different activities in this Christian union. That Jesus of Nazareth, you are going to be seen. You are going to be glorified. You are going to be worshipped and acknowledged. I pray for the advisory who are here today. I thank you because of them. I want to thank you because of the commitment the seal they have, even to see that this universe move on. There's even to see that this Christian union stand and they're grounded on a solid rock. I pray that let your grace be upon them and that we shall always be available to mender and walk with these dear ones. We thank you Lord. Let this day be a great success and a great turnaround for in Jesus name we pray and we believe. Amen. Amen. Yeah, let's give the Lord a hand clap for that mighty word. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Reverend, for that word of encouragement. And uh, we now quickly want to transition into the interactive session. Um, I will just help part of the, ex I'll request executive to just help us bring the staff who are amongst us onto the stage. And somebody please assist to move this podium away. I want, I'm trusting God that we'll work like in 45 minutes. Thank you very much. And even as we as we prepare to have our interactive sessions with the staff.